Hey guys, very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the video number 435. My name is Ajit Parmar and in this video today we are going to talk about how to basically uh, use the data validation with the offset in the match function and of course we will we will be using the if uh, function as well. Now uh, yesterday I talked about this uh, yesterday or I think day before yesterday guys I uploaded a video on the same subject but there we use the indirect function right but the same exercise but the, with the different solution so you may like to use the offset as well so ideally i mean the point is that when you work in excel uh, it's not that you know that you you should not have the options when you work in excel you should have many options to use you should have a different ways you know uh, of of looking at the problems and of uh, you know analyzing the things and then of course using the one function or the second function you you should have a choice right if you don't have a choice then you are somewhere in the middle of you know that basic or intermediate level if you are an advanced excel user for every problem you should have more than one solution and that is why I'm here to talk about this offset function today where we are going to use the match and the if function now before we start the video I want to make it clear that if you do not know offset function if you do not have match and the if function understanding please pause the video first you go back to the Excel offset function videos and Excel match function videos and Excel if function video, uh, videos right first make yourself comfortable with the basics and then come back here because here I'm not really going to explain these functions in detail we this is more of a like advanced video right now if you're watching the channel for the first time then as I said we are on the video number 435 so we got 43 435 videos guys on Excel Excel VBA access and access VBA and you can you just need to click on the playlist and these are the 45 playlist which I have created here now as I was talking about if you want to understand about the offset function you can click on this offset function and first watch the first two videos on the offset which will give you a good clarity and similarly you will find on this you know in these uh, playlist uh, among these playlists uh, there are um, a, two more playlists which is excel if function and excel we look up and match function uh, the playlist so you can go and learn about that right and as always i'm going to help you out because you you guys keep on asking me that you know because we have so many videos on this channel so if somebody has to start its learning whether it is a VBA or Excel or Access or Access VBA how to start so these are all the playlists which I have created for you guys okay you can pause the video and you can note it down and start watching the videos according to these series and if you talk about the Excel you see that you have the Excel indirect and somewhere here you would have the Excel offset function as well and similarly Excel if is also there Excel we look up and match is also there these are all the playlist and under these playlist you will find there I think bunch of the videos uh, maybe some 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 have five videos some have ten videos some may have 14 videos so you know there are a lot of videos right so f start with the basic videos first now let me show you the requirements so this email actually I received uh, I, I shared this video already I think um, let me show you if you you might have not watched that video yet so this is the video I uploaded uh, yesterday I uploaded this in the morning uh, and the same exercise we are going to do today with the offset function right this is the same video you can go and watch that one of my subscriber actually emailed me this question but of course I will uh, repeat the question here because this is a fresh video now the idea is that um, we have here data you have here some grids right the categories you can call it and under these categories we have number one number two so there are some numbers like this is a start number this is the end number and what we actually wanted to do is we wanted to create a drop down here which would give us the numbers basis z starting and the end point so your drop down here should give you one two three four five here it should give you six seven eight nine and then eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen thirty three thirty four thirty five thirty six and so on and we also need to ensure that uh, though this 
this is not asked by my subscriber but i you know actually added this uh, stuff that what if in future if i change this 5 to maybe 10 then automatically my data validation my drop down should change from 1 to 5 to 1 to 10 right so this is how generally we create the drop down we go in the data and we say that in the data validation we select the list and then we say that you know what is the source so right now you can refer this to any other range as well you can write here the numbers 1 to 3 4 5 or maybe just to show you how it is exactly it works i can create here a series so this is how the drop down gets created but you know guys th this is something which we are not going to do because i'm not sure uh, the next number would start from where so I cannot copy this data validation and paste it here because then you will have the same number getting pasted 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 which we do not want we want this data validation to automatically update it it should be on enough dynamic to you know to to see that from where it starts and where it actually ends so I have six six nine so basically my drop down should be here six to nine and also as I said if I'm going to change this to one to eight your drop down automatically is not going to change from one to five to eight so this is something which we are going to do so guys let's start this now video i think i have explained enough and in this now we have a different plan today entirely different from my previous video right and you must watch that video as well because it's always good to know the different different approaches now the first thing in this uh, particular case what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, copy this and paste here as a transpose okay so what i will do is uh, uh, or maybe you can do one thing you can simply use the trans uh, transpose as error as well a uh, transpose as formula as well now you know that how many basically the grid you have here so you have here grid 9 so i select 9 here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then you go to the formula bar and you see that transpose and then you select these items here and press Control shift enter remember you don't have to press enter you press Control shift enter so what will happen you will have this transpose formula getting pasted here now the good thing about this formula is that if you do any changes here in the let's say i change this to you know grid 11 this is what i'm going to see here as grid 11 so the change will automatically you know reflect here now what is the next thing so this is i'm just telling you i mean you can also use the simple option you can uh, i mean if you if you don't do not need this particular thing then what you can do is uh, you can also actually go and simply paste the transfer so you can just copy this and you can go and here press alt e s which is a paste special and you just use this transpose and the values and that's it guys you will get the same answer but this is not a formula so any any ch any change happens here that's not going to reflect here that you need you should know that right so this is done now what is the next thing i want to do so finally my grid is ready and now what i'm going to do is um i'm going to actually uh you know write here the numbers which which are these starting numbers and this is what we did last time as well so guys i'm going to simply copy this because from here the number should start so i now here i'm going to use the values and i'm going to use you know this the basically the transpose function here again right if you if you think that the start number can also change i would suggest you to use this transpose as a formula so that the numbers should automatically change so then what you can do is again you can use the same function you can say that equals to transpose and i'm just going to use this Control shift enter because when you enter the control shift enter that formula actually entered as you know uh, as an array right so i think i did some mistake let me go back to the formula transpose and let me select the entire table so we we are going to select the table like this control shift enter and there we go now once i got my starting number then here i will start writing my formula so you need to also um uh, you know um make a decision that 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 till which actually row you will have your last data so keep the buffer you really don't have to literally count how many series you have for example if this is one to five then obviously this is going to take one two three four five right and if some number is let's say 33 to 36 it's going to take 33 34 35 and 36 that's it but here you you will have more numbers here you will have 100 100 100 200 3 and you know 105 so what i will do is i think it cannot go beyond this so that's my range i just give it a you know some grid line and i just make the border thick just for the presentation perspective now what i will do is i can automate this i you can also drag this manually i mean you can say that you know this is going to be one two five so let me just use the one two five okay so i can simply say this plus one and you can just go and drag this and you can stop here and similarly for this six to nine 
you can again do the same stuff here again save in a time but you know guys then you will have to find it out uh, every time that what is the end point because for every number one we have a different number two which is the end point so i am not really going to do that let us automate that so the same function which we used yesterday i'm simply going to say that if if i add one number to this right and if that is going to be less than or equals to this number okay then what i want is i want that if it is less than this number or equals to this number then definitely i would like to see the next number which is an addition to the previous value so because we need the two here so i just add one to it otherwise if it is not the case if the number is bigger than the end point then there is no point of you know using that value so you have here one and two this is how you know uh, you can make this series now what I will do is I will simply go and this G2 I keep it open because when I drag the formula down this G2 should be G3 G4 G5 and your numbers will be incremented and here in the E4 what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this E4 uh, should remain as E4 for this particular value for this entire grid so that's it and when you drag the formula in this direction you see that you have your 1 2 3 4 5 and obviously you will get the error here because the previous value actually this value is empty so definitely we can put the if error function there right that's fine now uh, so i can put the if error we will put the if error later <coughs> now when i when i'm when i'm going to drag this function left to right you know what will happen basically this 5 is not going to change so ideally this should change and this should be 9 guys right because when you move the formula left to right your column changes your row number never increments right so in this particular case i have to do this manual setup right well uh, there is a choice you can also go and use the indirect as well if you want right for example right now what i'm doing is i'm just changing this uh, this refer reference to 9 now now this is going to be treated as 9 so the comparison will happen with this 6 so the formula says that if i add 6 plus 1 and if it is less than my end point which is 9 then please show that number otherwise not so if you just drag this again you will have this 6 7 8 9 and you know so every time guys when you copy this uh, when you paste the function here this is what you need to do manually right so here also the formula now has to go to the 15 if this is something which is not uh, creating a problem for you you are happy with that you can do that manually well this is fine but if you if you if this is irritating if think if you think that uh, dragging the function left to right and changing each cell one by one it's something i'm really not going to work then we have a solution to to sort this problem we can use the indirect function right so what you need to do is you just insert the one row here and then so now in this exercise um, i was not thinking actually of uh, you know talking about the indirect but we can use it because uh, this is a good exercise now you know why we are using the internet first of all the reason is very simple i talked about this in many my previous videos as well like especially under the indirect playlist and uh, there are a couple of videos uh, uh, on the interview as well uh, excel interview series now you know what happens if if you want this 5 9 in the left to right direction you can't do that right if i if i want that uh, when i drag the formula left to right i should be able to see 5 9 15 36 to 59 you know it's not possible at all because when you move the left to right function your column changes so ideally you need here e6 here e6 because in the e6 you have 9 and then e7 and so on right so in order to sort out this problem we we can use the indirect function for example now you know that your your end point your number two value is in the column e but the rows are changing e5 e6 e7 so what we can do is we can very smartly i can write here e5 okay and when i write here e5 i just drag it and we are going to fill the series so you have the fill series if you don't see the fill series click here make sure you should select this fill series option now these are basically by the columns now what i'm going to do is as indirect works on the cell address because when when you use the indirect indirect always goes to the cell and it finds that what cell address it is it has there and you know it then retrie retrieves the value from there so here where i was doing this all the manual instead of you know uh, instead of selecting this e5 you know what i'm going to do i'm simply going to say that indirect go in the indirect 
and indirect is going to pick up this uh, the cell called G1 that's it guys this is what you need to do and please freeze the dollar part because when I'm going to drag this down G$1 should not change to G2 or G3 G4 because then that will change your reference so I'm keeping here my simply G$1 so that have now what actually how it is going to work indirect if this condition is going to satisfy which means that indirect will go in the G5 in the G1 in the G1 it finds that there is a cell address which is mentioned there which is E5 immediately it goes to the E5 and gets the value 5 for you that's it now you you must be wondering that what is the benefit of it now the thing is if you move this left to right this is not actually uh, you know uh, uh, this is going to change from G1 to H1 and in the H1 you have a new formula you have a new and end point you have a new limitation which is 9 because this is e6 and in the e6 i have written here 9 so automatically your grid is going to be dynamic and similarly when it comes to the this cell when when h is going to change you know from h you are going to have i then you will have a e7 and in the e7 you have a new end point which is 15 so that's what we need right so uh, now i will simply go and actually i'm going to put the if error for my any error i just go and display the space this i already explained in my previous video also now guys i'm just going to drag it and you see the magic and I just drag this look at this guys this is really really super cool right I didn't talk about this option last time so you can add this option as well there you can add that this option there as well right but anyways that's what I'm saying you know when I record the videos when I when I when I uh, talk about anything it it's you know if randomly something comes in my mind I just go and share it with you so this is a good thing we automated the entire task and you can maybe you can go and hide this so that user is not going to see that now once we have these numbers created what is the next thing first of all we are going to check that if I just write here 9 is it going to work you can see that it's working beautifully if I write here 6 to 8 you see that the numbers are changing accordingly if I just go and write a 102 you see that the numbers are changing this is really really super cool right I'm really loving it and yesterday also I said the same thing that this is really a very super fun so thanks to my subscriber who actually asked this question Mr. Modi actually asked me this question right well I remember his name um, because of our honorable uh, uh, loving Prime Minister <laughs> so I just remember the name uh, so this is how uh, we have done our job now what is the next thing I want to do is now the next thing you want to do is you want to now use the offset because so far I haven't talked about the offset let me first clear this range now guys what is the offset function you might be knowing the offset but you might not be knowing that if offset can also be used in the data validation yes guys you can use that and we are going to use the offset so when you write the offset first of all let me sh let me just give you a some idea about the offset now let's say if I write here five six seven and you know some number I have written here now what if you want to create a table of this five six seven four can you do that can you just simply select this table and you can you press enter I don't think so right you will get the error and the reason is because you can't actually link four cells with the one cell if I give you a task to link one cell of course you can do that right but guys if you just use the arrays if you just close this well closing is not required that that is I'm just doing that but if you press ctrl shift to enter instead of pressing the enter this is what you get to see now there is no error and if you press f9 here expand the formula you get to see your table now this is the same thing which I can do with the offset how are you gonna do that this is the offset guys I talked about this in my those basics videos please go and watch that but I'll just you know brief you about it now this is the reference reference means that from where to start so because I need 5 6 7 4 which means I need the four rows I'm gonna start from the reference the starting point is f1 now from where actually your table should start well if I need 5 6 7 4 I have two options either I can start my table from 5 or I can start my table from 4 right which is the beginning or the end point so I want to start from 5 now to go to the 5 you need how many rows you are supposed to move from this f1 well I don't want to I really don't need to move any any row because I want the fives and I'm already on the five so you write here zero and then how many columns you're supposed to move well there's no movement so you write here zero comma zero now the next thing which comes so if I just press enter you get to see here five but we need the five six seven four right so then you use the height and the weight now how it height means that number of rows 
remember a row and column always starts with zero that's why i did not write here one you know in the first appearance when you look at this formula you say that row number has to be one and the column has to be one because i'm on the same cell but no it is not that rows and columns always starts with the zero but height and width starts with the one you know so how many number of rows i need what is the height of this table if i want to form well i want four because i have the four rows and what is the width the width is going to be one because i have just one column now if you press enter you will get the error this has to be entered as an array because i'm using height and width so you press ctrl shift enter and now you go to the equals to sign plus press f9 to expand the formula and there we go guys now this is the same kind of a thing i'm going to do there so and then finally we will put this formula in the data validation guys so let's come back here and let's do that stuff so here i say offset i'm going to give my reference as g2 now i'm going to start from the g2 remember now how many rows i need well uh, i need just one row why because i want this the next number to start whether it is 1 6 11 33 so i'm starting from here so to go to the next row i want one row to be moved because this is going to be zero and then how many columns you are supposed to uh, you know move well how many columns you are supposed to move this is very interesting now how you will come to know that how many columns you are supposed to move well if this is grid 1 in the future this can be grid 3 grid 4 you can you know interchange them so in that way what i will do i will use the match function i will say that match look up this grid 1 in this table and return me the position of this you know the value the grid 1 so you use the 0 for the exact match now you know what happens this grid 1 match is going to look up in this table and it finds here and the match is going to return the 1 because that's the first position right but for the offset function as i said that this column actually is not going to be one this is going to be because it starts its calculation from zero so if you want to be on the grid one basically you should be on the zero column so match returns one so you have to subtract minus one to balance the things now the next thing comes the height so how what how many rows you are actually required if you are on this one so well i don't know because how many rows i have it can uh, because for every every grade we have a different number of rows so maximum i can maybe take 15 rows because i know from the 15 i don't have you know more than 15 rows so 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is 9 10 11 12 13 or maybe you can use 13 as well that's okay right now what is the width the width is always going to be one because i just need this one column either this column this column this column that would depend what i'm actually trying to my match is you know trying to look up so now you press Control shift enter and you go to this f9 and look at the formula so guys we got one two three four five six seven eight nine and then space 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 which is absolutely working right now if i just go and change this to grid let's say four look at this let's now let's have a look what what's going to happen now the thing is when you change this to grid four what will happen this is going to change automatically right so if this is going to change automatically what will happen match will find this grid in this table in again you know in the same position which is first position so when you press f9 you will again see the same value but the point is grid 4 actually is 33 to 36 so if i'm changing this to grid 4 i have to change this numbers also from 1 to 9 to 33 to 36 i'm telling you all the possibilities right in that case we did one pro you know one there is a one thing which we did wrong if if you if if you think that this these grids can be you know changed any point in time they can take each other place you know any any point in time a user can you know shuffle them then guys don't use the transpose function because if you do change here the grid 4 is going to change if it, this is you you see that right this is a grid 4 now so ideally this should happen grid 1 and this remains there as grid 4 because then the match is going to pick up the grid 4 and it's going to find that grid 4 in the fourth position and then the offset will go in the fourth column and pick up this you know grid 4 item so what you need to do is in that case you copy this and paste it i'm just going to remove the formula now see what i'm going to do so again this was the grid 1 so i'm just going to change this to grid 1 let's say now i'm going to change this to grid one and obviously this is also going to be a grid one so let me just change this back now this is your final position 
and you know that this is working if I press F9 this is coming good now the same step I'm going to do here now instead of the grade 4 the grade 1 I change this to grade 4 I press enter look at this guys your answer is changed now it automatically reached to the grade 4 how let us understand this now first of all let me press F9 and see that we are getting the values yes we are getting the values we are getting 33, 34, 35, 36, which is perfect. Now, how this magic actually happened? Now, you see that you said that offset, you got to start from G2. You are not changing your starting position. So, from the G2, if I'm going to move one row down, which is this one row down, obviously, I would be here. Now, I would, I, I could be here, here or here because this is the entire, this, this is the row. This is the one row. So, this one row can be, uh, you know on this cell on this cell or on this cell or on this cell now what happens when you set that match what you need to do you need to pick up this grid 4 and you need to give me the column number of this grid 4 which is a position it goes in this table and it finds the position of grid 4 which is 1 2 3 4 but because you are subtracting minus 1 from it 4 minus 1 is going to make 3 so ideally you are saying offset please go in the G2 move one row down and three columns to the right side because it is a positive number so three columns to the right side means that zero one two three and finally one row down so it goes here in this 33 and from the 33 it's gonna pick up the number of rows which is you know which are 13 so we have the 13 rows and then the same column which is one column so you will have your 33 34 35 36 and then space 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 you know that way guys right so this is how the function works so let me change this back to one right now what you need to do is before you drag the function please make sure your g2 is going to freeze c5 should not freeze because we need c6 c7 c8 c9 c10 every time the match is going to look up these you know values in this table and you will have a different answer and make sure you should freeze the table because g2 and o2 is the table where i need to look up every time these are all the grids one by one and rest all the constants so i just press ctrl shift enter if i just drag this and you see that i'm getting here the perfect answer 1 6 11 33 if i go and expand this f9 you see that i got the 55 60 56 57 59 this is wonderful guys right and you know that if i just change this to let's say a number called 12 if i just change this 1 to 12 you see that this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 will come and you already said in your offset that my height is going to be 13 which means i have the capability my offset has the capacity to absorb 13 rows so if you go and press f9 you will get to see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and there's a still one more space right so this is what actually the offset is doing now i know that this is something which we uh, which i mean we have to convert it into a data validation so what i will do is i will simply copy this function first you test it in the excel if it works then just go to the data validation we are done with this i'm simply going to select this data validation and i'm going to say that go in the list because i need the drop down and here write this formula guys make sure your dollar should be there otherwise you will have a big time problem because these dollar signs are very important right so i press ok and now i can see that my data validation is done now you just need to copy this and just go here press paste special alt e s and then use the validation from here and you can use that you can also go to the home tab and you can click on this paste paste special and you can use this validation it's one and the same thing but the shortcut key is alt e s there is a one more shortcut key i think um which when you hover here i think they show you control e or sort of that stuff um i think it's come here yeah control alt v this is the another shortcut key you can use right so guys finally we pasted it and let's have a look on the numbers so there we go we have the six seven eight and here i have 11 12 13 14 15 i'm using the alt down arrow to expand the formula if you do not know this this is how you can use alt down arrow your data validation will expand and then you using the up arrow and the right arrow uh, sorry not the right arrow but the up arrow the down arrow you can you know change your numbers so guys this is working perfect you can see here we have got the all the values if i just go and change this to maybe let's say uh, 63 to um maybe 72 right then 
you come back here and look at the formula look at this now we started getting 70 71 72 this is super cool if i just go and change this to 110 look at this or maybe 112 because i still have a space so 112 look at this guys this is going to show you all the numbers and if you're just going to make this uh 101 let's have a look look at this so data validation is changing so what we did is we i just used this offset function this function i just used right so you can pause the video and you can have a look on this offset function how we actually used it so that's it for now guys i hope you enjoyed this series and please do subscribe to the channel and i will be coming back with some another exciting stuff very soon thank you so much for watching stay happy stay fit